So, Mr. Sandy Monroe, it's, uh, I'm a huge fan of your work um, and been following your channel and some of the stuff you've done. I actually, uh, one of my choice by an i3 was based on uh, your review <laughs> really? on it. Uh, yeah. um, and so I know your time is very valuable. I thank you for your time. So, um, a couple questions for you. The very first sure. one that comes up for me is, how have and will uh, EVs affect your business model as far as the teardowns? Because it seems like they're probably easier to tear down in some ways, but uh, then there's also a lot of innovation right. in there. So, um, um, our business model has changed pretty dramatically when it comes to cars. <clears throat> we almost never do a nice vehicle. Almost okay. never. And uh, quite frankly, um, our business model used to be to tear the whole car apart and analyze every part in it and now we're finding our customers really all they want to know about is the battery systems the electronics the software uh, the, the, the power systems things like that and so um, we don't we don't really spend an awful lot of time fooling around with um, how somebody assembled a seat or um, or an instrument panel unless there's something really dramatic there we, like we usually walk away yeah or castings yeah the, the, Actually, with a Tesla, we, we tear down everything. Okay. We, I want to see every screw that's, uh, that's in that car. I don't want to have it costed in one eye because, quite frankly, a lot of people are going to take the data that we sell to them and they're going to try and create Emulated. a new business model. So it's, it's a big deal for that. For other cars, until we get, like, for instance, I'm going to try my best to get a hold of a BYD Seagull. $11,000 car sold in China. It'll be more expensive here, but it's still going to be cheaper than anything anybody could possibly produce. So when we do that, that'll be right down to the last nut and bolt, whatever. And yeah, weld. Yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah. So the next one would be uh, dry cell. You spoke to, spoke yeah. about that today. So dry yeah. cell, uh, what's your view on how that'll impact degradation over time? And uh, like fire risk, because if it's the, the liquid or gaseous part is the part that's the high risk of yeah. fire. Yeah, so at the end of the day, the drier you can make the cell, the, light, the, the less likely you're going to have a fire, period. That's kind of the way it works. Yeah. Um, the dry cell that we saw at uh, Tesla just makes it that 4680 battery is going to be less costly than its... Uh, it's twin uh, that, uh, that that is not uh, is, is a wet cell. So the price goes down and when the price goes down that means that the the price for the battery pack goes down that means that it's easier on the uh, the consumer for buying or Tesla can choose to just um, you know fill her boots with uh, with extra extra cash right so that, that's kind of it yeah. okay great uh, now next one is the lithium-ion battery as we have it today is been kind of around for a while. It took a really long time to get to market from the time they successfully made yeah. a little tab battery. Um, so some of the great technology that's out here is going to be a while to become standard. What do you right. see being like the next 10 years in, in battery technology? I don't think it's possible to predict that. Um, I believe that um, that uh, battery technology is moving so quickly and there are so many people working on it, so many really smart people working on batteries that it, it would be nearly impossible. I mentioned, um, you know, uh, some people that are, are talking about a liquid battery. I don't know how that works. Um, I also heard, uh, you know, the uh, some people talking about um, using uh, um, uh, using um, uh, diodes right. um, instead of um, instead of in or yeah, like a capacitive yeah, kind capacitive, of diode. Ca capacitive diodes instead of just having batteries and if we can figure out how to meter out the uh the power um that that's a game that's a huge game changer probably even better than the, what they're promising with solid state solid state would also use the same sort of stuff if, if if we can make solid state and it comes in at the prices that everybody said it's going to come in well first off you're going to have a whole lot more charge capability with solid state for a smaller package and a lighter package and then on top of that, if we add the um, uh, capacitor, sorry, the um, uh, uh, yeah, capacitive charging capabilities, then what we'd have is something that could give you a thousand miles. I mean, really and truly, and I could charge it up in no time flat because um, uh, capacitors suck up juice immediately. Yeah, you don't it have just to goes that, in and boom, it's done. The charging. Yeah, so I think that there's plenty of opportunities for. Um, for uh, batteries to change and predicting 10 years 
I can't even predict one year okay. because there's so much stuff coming out. For sure. All yeah. right. Last question, then I'll let you yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a two-parter, though. Aptera, when do you see yeah. the first one hitting the street? And what September. Do you, September? And what does it look like? What do you predict like the ramp rate on that to be? Um, probably initially a couple of thousand, um, a couple of thousand a month maybe, or maybe less than that even. But then um, um, we're we're predicting uh, uh, something like next year they'll be they'll be making about twenty thousand okay. um, uh, twenty thousand um, a year, and then the ramp up after that is huge. All it, right. uh, basically, it's just uh, it's not easy because the, the car itself is going to be easy to build, but it's not easy to find um, uh, the. Um, the suppliers that we need for that car, right? Especially <clears throat> so, scale, um, I'd imagine. Yeah, right. So that that's going to be uh, a bit of an issue, but when it comes out, it'll be a perfect build. Uh, the car is a delight to drive. It's it's very quick, um, and you. I mean, really and truly, even if you pay more for an Aptera, you're going to pay almost nothing for electricity. I mean, uh, the fuel price goes away as long as you're in like a California or a, below the Mason-Dixon line kind yeah, of a Seattle place. may not be ideal. It'll uh, still Seattle, work, it won't be ideal. Detroit might be a bit of an issue too, but at the end of the day, um, uh, for most of the country, for most of where the country lives, um, it'll be uh, an ideal uh, vehicle. I'm it's sure smaller, Arizona will love it. It's quicker. It. It's it's got everything going for it. I, I know I've ordered mine because uh, you know, so I, did I. like I <laughs> like I said, I have an i3, and good and bad about the vehicle, but the nimble nimble handling is one of the things I yeah. love about it, and I yeah. expect at least that much from the Aptera. It will be, uh, it will it'll be that and more. Yeah. All right, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for okay. your time. Thank uh, you. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank All you. Right.